Hi, just testing. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yes. Should we start now? Sure, yeah, go ahead. Oh, Rich, you need to uh, broadcast the Zoom. This is Nadia from Global Admissions. Can you guys hear me? So uh, hello, everyone. If you can hear me OK, you can say something on the chat box. Maybe say hi back. Or you can also tell us where you're from, because it's always excited. Uh, it's always exciting to know where you guys came from, because a lot of you uh, usually come from different part of the world. So we would like to know uh, where you come from and maybe what time it is uh, currently in your location. So let me know if everything works. Hi, yeah, thank you. Hello. Uh, hello from Iraq. Hello. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so we can start. I think the audio should work correctly. So anyway, if you guys experience any uh, technical di difficulties or maybe any uh, anything wrong with the audio or with the video, with the screen, let us know in the chat box so we can uh, fix it and then this event can run smoothly. So. Yeah, let me greet everybody properly. So hello everyone to the first Global Universities Online Open Day. Today is June 18, 2022 at 5 p.m. Beijing time and we will start our event for today. So uh, for today's event, sorry, let's, for today's event, I will bring you to travel around the world. So usually we are only doing China and we are only sharing information about China, but this time we are sharing information uh, about studying in the UK and also studying in the US. So how exciting is that? So please stay tuned for our event. And this is uh, the rough schedule for today's uh, event where we'll be sharing about studying in China. And then we will let you know also about the global, global COVID update and work study updates and also about studying MBBS abroad. And then there will be information about studying in the USA, in UK, and also some guides from Global Admissions on how you can start your study overseas journey. So 
before we start and before we go any further, let me introduce you to Global Admissions. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you know Chana Admissions. So Global Admissions is also uh, the same company, basically. It's our sister company, and it's also a platform that we recently developed for international students to apply to global university, which means we are giving you options outside of China. We are giving you um, the options beyond China. And then we partner with over 100 of top universities worldwide, and we have over 150,000 registered students on our platform. And with Global Admissions Platform, international students can apply to universities in more than 20 countries in our platform. So we are giving you more options, and also uh, we are answering your questions and your dreams for a lot of you who wants to study abroad, but to other destinations. So our team, is a multicultural theme which come from uh, various backgrounds and countries. So our founder is, is from the UK and then uh, me, Nadia, I'm from Indonesia. And then my colleagues, they're from many parts of the world. I have colleagues from Malaysia, Philippines, from the US, from China, from South Africa. So we are a pretty diverse group. And then uh, most of our themes, we also have an international experience before because most of us were also an international students before. So some of us studied in China, and then we also have another colleagues that study in the Philippines, study in German. So it's kind of a diverse situation. And now we want to bring this experience closer to you. So uh, this is a sneak peek of our platform, Global Admissions, where we can help you apply not only to China, but also to other destinations like US, UK, Canada, Australia, German, and other Asian countries and other European countries. So there's a lot of destinations that you can choose from. And then this is the areas of coverage in terms of country or regions that are currently covered on global admissions. So you can check uh, that we are now covering the American continent and also the European, the Asia, and also the Australia part. So we give you uh, so many different options. So you can also expand your world and also go overseas to pursue your studies. And then this is also another sneak peek of our platform, Global Admissions, where you can use to do uh, your research as well about what are the other programs available in the countries and so on. And we are giving you information here. We are basically gathering information from uh, different sources and we pull it together in Global Admissions so we, it can be as comprehensive as possible in order to help you guys have a smooth process to study abroad. So for today's event for Global Universities Online Open Day, each university will roughly have us uh, or each university or presenter will have about 15 minutes of presentation time. And then there will be a live Q&A as well. And you can also drop your question on the Q&A box. So if you go uh, on your Zoom app, there will be this Q&A. So you can just drop your questions there. And basically the presenter will introduce the country, programs, living situation, admissions process, scholarships, and all the other updates. And later the global admissions team will share about how to apply online to overseas universities on global admissions and our China admissions platform. And then uh, this is the schedule for today's online open day where we will start with studying in China first. So we have the Jiang University of Science and Technology today joining with us, and then it will go to China. And then after that, we will go covering the MBBS topic and studying in the US and UK and more information about how to apply. So guys, are you ready? I hope everybody's ready and everybody's excited to get a lot of information and to get a lot of fun in today's session. So here we go, let's go to China first. So I am inviting to the Young University of Science and Technology to come and also share uh, the presentation from us. Hi, teacher Sun, can you hear me? Hello, everyone. This is Mi Sun from Zhejiang University of Science and Technology, and it is my great delight today for me to introduce our school to you. And for Zhejiang University of Science and Technology, it is a university located in Hangzhou, China. Maybe you have no idea what, where Hangzhou it is, but you definitely must know uh, what uh, Shanghai in uh, in China. For Hangzhou, it is like, like it is like forty minutes 
40, 40 minutes away from Shanghai if you go by train and it take like half an hour. So it's quite near the Shanghai municipality. And for today's introduction, I will divide into three parts. And the first one, the Zhejiang and Hangzhou, the second one about our university, the zoos. And the third one, I would like to introduce a little bit about our internationalization. And we will start from uh, the province and the city where our university is at. And just now we mentioned that for Hangzhou, it is 151 kilometers from Shanghai, 40 minutes by train. And also for Hangzhou, it has our own uh, international airport. So there's no worry about uh, flying to, Han flying to Han uh, Hangzhou. And also actually for, uh, for, for Zhejiang University of Science and Technology, and this and our university enjoys a long history and also for Hanzhou itself, it also provides great support for ourselves. And it provides a very good environment for all the students studying here. And you know that there's a company that, whose name is Alibaba, right? Uh, Alibaba is right located in Hanzhou. But of course, Hanzhou has more companies than Alibaba. We also have the Gili Automation, Hailiang, Hailiang Group, Wuchang, Zhongda Group, etc. And then about Zeus, just now, and Zeus was founded in 1980, and it features multi disciplinary in education. And, and we can have a look at the right part, we can see the distinctive majors which make our very unique among the other universities, for example, the engineering, art, science, etc. And for our university, it divided into two parts. One is the Anji campus, the other one is the Xiaohehuang campus, and with the second one being the main campus. And also, actually, for uh, Zhejiang University of Science and Technology, and our, our university is very big, and it has 17 schools and faculties. And for the faculty members, we have around like 14, we have like 1400 faculty members. And for the bachelor, for the program of available, we have 11 English taught bachelor program and 56 Chinese taught bachelor program. And of course, uh, because we enjoy a long history in international education, we have besides the degree programs, we also have a lot of other programs, for example, the mobility program and the student exchange program, etc. And then we will and, and then we will go to the ratio of international education and also the normal education for Chinese students. And, and for actually for the uh, we can see from the graph and we can see that uh, beside, uh, except the, the year of 2020, uh, which is affected by the COVID-19, and generally we are, we are developing in an uprising trend, uprising trend. So that, make, so that means we are, um, our development is, uh, it is very well. And also we are going to, for school and international education, it is one of the top priorities of ours. So at international education, you know, once the school pays attention to international education, it means you will receive more support and you will have great teachers here. And for the ratio of international students out of all students, and we rank fourth in Zhejiang province, in Zhejiang province. And and actually, for the nationalities of st students in Zeus, and we are quite diversified, more than 100 nations. But the top 10 countries, they are from uh, the Zimbabwe, Morocco, Uzbekistan, Zambia, Ghana, Nigeria, etc. And for the programs here, I think it may, you may probably be most interested. And for, for this year, for this year, um, the English taught undergraduate program available. They include the international economics and trade, civil engineering, computer science and tech, uh, computer 
science and technology, food science and engineering, uh, you can, uh, I think you can take a screenshot uh, or take a photo of this page uh, so that when our session is completed, you can check your photos so that you can get to know what majors are available um, available here. But basically, we have the English taught and the graduate program as well as the uh, uh, as well as the English taught postgraduate program. And meanwhile, we also have the Chinese taught uh, programs here. And I would like to say that the Chinese language and the language literature program. And for this program, if you have HSK3, if you have HSK4, so you can start, you can start from uh, your, uh, your study at Zeus from the second year. But if you should have a HSK5 certificate, it means you can start your, uh, your, your education here uh, strictly from the, uh, the third grade. So it means if you should have the HSK5 certificate, then you can obtain the uh, degree certificate, the bachelor certificate within two years, within two years. I think this is very uh, competitive. And also we, uh, we have the master of teaching Chinese to speakers of other languages. And for this major, uh, you can find a lot of interesting and fascinating people. And they have actually be become like the international, uh, the, the international celebrities or at least national celebrities in China. So, and I think, it, um, for this kind of majors, they enable you to understand the culture, to understand the people, and so it will make it more, uh, make it better to get involved, to get involved in Chinese culture, and also it enable you, empower you to, uh, to to uh, to to get to access more opportunities and chances in China, and. And also we have just now what we introduced, they are the bachelor program and the master programs. And among those we have just mentioned one, the distinctive ones, one is the uh, master of teaching Chinese to speakers of other languages and uh, the Chinese language and the literature. Besides these two uh, distinctive ones, well, uh, the other distinctive ones include, but not limited to, fashion performance and image design, uh, as well as the uh, some tour study. But for some tour study, right now it is not available because of the border, because the border is not open yet, but in the future it will, I believe the border will be open soon. And for, for the education here, we, we have actually have a lot of uh, teaching methods for example, the uh, one of which is project-based learning. And for internationalization, actually, and for internationalization, it is one of the key features of Zhejiang University of Science and Technology, especially for the, uh, the international cooperation between Zeus and Germany and France. But of course, the international education for international students is also one, one of our focus. And we have a lot of Sino Germany platforms, also have a lot of double degree program as well. And then we come to this session, the scholarships, and this I think you will be most interested. And because right now, and we actually provide a lot of a lot of types of scholarships. And right now, available the scholarship available, they are the uh, Zhejiang Provincial Government Scholarship for international students. And you can check the, your screen at your left button. And for Zhejiang Provincial Government Scholarship for international students, if you are applying for a master degree, and then um, if you are awarded this scholarship, you will be given a at a rate of 30,000 yuan. And for the bachelor degree, it is 20,000 yuan. And also right now, uh, actually, we, uh, for Zeus, it also provides the CSC scholarships, which is full scholarships. They do not only cover your uh, school, uh, the tuition, but also your accommodation, insurance, and the living allowances. So I think this one is amazing. And But for the CSC scholarship right now, what is available? 
This is called the Silk Road Scholarship. And it's for the, um, this is for international e economics and trade um, taught in Chinese. So if you want to apply the Silk Road Scholarship, you need to have the HSK5 certificate. If you have that, uh, no hesitation, apply immediately. I mean, apply immediately, okay? Because according to my experience, the deadline for uh, applying for Silk Road Scholarship is approaching. So, and if you are late in, uh, in submitting the application, you may miss it, okay? And besides the Silk Road Scholarship and the Zhejiang Provincial Government Scholarship, we also have the scholarship for outstanding new students of Jews. If you are granted the first prize, it will cover 100% of, of your first year's tuition fee. The second prize, it covers 70% 70 of the first year's tuition fee, the third prize, and 50% of the tuition fee. Uh, here, I would like to remind you, because right now it is, the, uh, <clears throat> it is like the end of June, <clears throat> so the seats for the scholarship is limited. So the earlier you come to apply <clears throat> and the higher chance you will enjoy a decent scholarship. I would like to repeat again, if you want to apply for the scholarships, the earlier you come to us to apply, the higher chance you enjoy a more decent scholarship. And then you must be uh, wondering the how you are able to apply for the scholarship and to apply for studying at Zeus. And here, and we can uh, actually all our application, all our application right now, it is carried out in our in a specific application system. And for this page, I would like to recommend you again to take a photo, and if you want to apply to study at Zeus, and. At the first point, we can see that all applications shall be done in the application system, HTTP uh, and comma, uh, slash slash isam.zeus.edu.cn. This is the application system where you can apply for study at Zeus. Also, uh, you can submit your scholarship application form through the same system. The system, it will, it will guide you what kind of documents you will require, you will require, and also it will guide you what kind of documents you should submit if you want to apply for the scholarship. So this website is very, very important. And for master pro bachelor program and master program, and they are the application, they are done in the same website, in the same website. And I and here, if you should have any question on uh, how to apply, or you want to know more details of what majors we are available and what kind of scholarship we still offer, uh, you can try to contact us either by uh, making a call or email, or you can just visit our website. So here, I would like to recommend for the third time that uh, please take a photo of this page. This has all the contact information of Zeus. Uh, Zeus actually, we, this is really a wonderful university, not only in environment, the uh, city support, as well as the, uh, as well as the, uh, the others. I believe if you choose Zeus, you will not regret your choice. Okay, hope we can see you soon at Zeus, at Zeus in this September. And if you have any uh, things, remember, take, the, uh, take this photo and email us or call us or visit our website, okay? Okay, that's all. Thank you for your time and attention. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, teacher Sun, for sharing information from Zeus. I think we can ask, uh, sorry, I think we can answer one or two questions. Because mm. uh, you mentioned a lot about internship, at, uh, sorry, scholarship at Zeus. Yes. So it's a lot of good opportunities for international students out there. So do you have any tips on what kind of students can have a better chance in getting the scholarships? Or maybe is there any requirements to get the scholarships? And for, to, to apply for the scholarship, the prerequisites will be you should be qualified to apply for the bachelor degree or master degree. And 
uh, one of the key one of the key criteria and we will refer to is your GPA your GPA and of course if you for example if you are uh, if you, your GPA is not so uh, is not so satisfactory but you but you have a lot of social activity you can prove that you are a very enthusiastic and promising and very in, uh, very inspiring uh, student and we can we will also take those ones into consideration consideration and for if you want to apply the bachelor degree and of course you need to hold a high school diploma and less than 30 years 30 years uh, uh, 30 years old and also and and also we have certain language language and uh, language uh, requirements if you want to, uh, to apply for Chinese taught programs you should have the HSK4 and if you want to apply for the uh, for, for uh, sorry if you want to apply for the Chinese taught program you should have the uh, HSK4 yes and if you want to apply for the English taught program and uh, you should also have certificates proving mm -hmm. that you are able to uh, to take the uh, English taught programs and so these are the basic requirements for the degree uh, for the uh, for the applicants. And if you want to further apply for scholarships, your GPA counts, and also the your uh, your previous uh, awards and your social activity. It will also add more points when in your application. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you. I think one mm -hmm. final question for me, because uh, this also offers a lot of English thought programs, right? But mm. I think one of the reasons why students want to go to China or wants to study in China is also to learn Chinese language because it's getting mm. more and more important these days. So um, do they have an opportunity to learn Chinese while studying their degree in English at ZUS? Mm, actually, for all degree programs, they also uh, incorporate Chinese courses, Chinese courses. So I think this will be one of the uh, main method for you to, to get to know, uh, to study more about Chinese. And then meanwhile, actually, we will, uh, we will launch a lot of a lot of extracurriculum activities and through which you will got you will got to uh, make friends with uh, make Chinese friends and to practice your Chinese from either with your uh, country mates or with the uh, Chinese students and because you know to learn to master a language practice makes perfect right that's mm. right mm -hmm. Um, okay. maybe, uh, meanwhile, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, one more information for you, but actually we also have the uh, Chinese Bridge program, and this is a free program, and for this program, and you will get to also, we all, not only uh, will uh, invite you to get to know more about the Chinese, but also we will feed you information on Chinese cultures or, or the uh, Chinese economic aspect, etc. And if you, um, but for that kind of program, it is not like organized on a regular basis. But if you are interested and you can, uh, either you want to apply to study Zoo, uh, to apply at Zeus or not, you can email me, you can email me uh, so that once we have this kind of program, uh, you can come to join this so that you can get to learn, learn more about the Chinese. Mm. That's great. So thank you, Teacher Sun. I think that's fantastic information. And if you guys are interested to apply to ZUS, please apply as soon as possible when the application period is still open. And if you hide, if you still have any more questions, you can email Teacher Sun or you can email China Admissions. Maybe if you're interested to join the Chinese Bridge program, do contact us for more information so we can keep your name and we can inform you when the program is open. Thank you. And uh, it's thank a really you. nice meeting here. Thank you. Yeah, bye -bye. nice to meet you again. Bye-bye. Mm. So for the next part of today's uh, event, it's going to be my chance to share about uh, studying in China for all of you. So after I share about studying in China, there will be information about the global COVID updates and then studying uh, MBBS abroad, studying in the US and also studying in UK. So stay tuned. And don't miss all of the information that we're going to be sharing today. So let me start my presentation. I hope you guys can all see my screen. And then also just a final reminder, if you, ha if you have any questions, please write it on the Q&A box. And the Global Admissions team will be there and answer your questions. 
And if your questions is specific for us, for example, or about studying in China or UK or uh, studying in the US, you can also mention uh, the topic up front. For example, this question is for us, or this question is for studying in China or studying in UK, so that we can cover your questions. Anyway, let's get started and let's uh, dig further into studying in China with global admissions or China admissions in this case. Yeah, so first of all, okay, so first of all, let me introduce myself again in case this is the first time we meet each other online. So I'm Nadia, I'm from Indonesia. And then right now I'm working with China admissions and we're based uh, in Beijing. And I also were studying in Beijing before at the University of International Business and Economics. And after I finished my master's degree there, I work for China admissions until right now and also for global admissions too now. So we have a mission uh, to help international students to study abroad, to be able to study in China or other destinations. So uh, this is a little bit about China admissions. So basically, uh, we are also a platform where we help international students apply to Chinese universities. So you'll be able to see a lot in our platform. So information about the program, universities, but not only that, also about the application process and you can apply directly to these universities on China admissions platform. And these are some of our partner universities, including, including the Zhejiang University of Science and Technology who just uh, gave the wonderful presentation just now. So uh, before we go any further, let me give you further understanding about why you should be considering China as your studying destination. So one of the most reasons why international students choose China is because they also want to learn the language. And Chinese language is one of the most important language in the whole world right now. As a matter of fact, it is the number one most spoken language in the entire world. So imagine the importance of Chinese. Imagine you being able to speak Chinese. Of course, your confidence and also your knowledge will be increased and then you will also become more competitive in a global scale so if you're working in a company wherever the company is and if they know that you can speak Chinese they actually will appreciate you more so that actually the reality these days and that's why students want to come to China because they want to get their degrees from Chinese universities but also they want to be immersed in the culture and they want to be able to speak the language and secondly it's because the uh, Chinese universities, they are high ranking and also reputable universities. I think in the recent year, this has become very, very, uh, very, very uh, more famous for China. And then a lot, a lot of their universities are more high ranking and are more recognized in a global scale as well. So a lot of, uni a lot of students of course, you guys would know universities like Tsinghua University or Peking University, but there are so many other universities beyond just Tsinghua and Peking that have a very high reputation, not just in China, but also overseas. So in the recent years, Chinese universities, they crawl up the ladder in the global university ranking and they have much, much, much better uh, education quality these days. And this is one of the reasons why international students would wanna go to China because education in China is also as competitive as the other countries now. And then the third reason why students would wanna go to China is because they also want to learn from China's fast development. I'm pretty sure you have heard uh, about this from the news outside or from the internet on how fast China is building things and how fast China is uh, modernizing the city or things like that. And it is really true. And once you are there in China later, you'll be able to see all of that. You'll be able to learn from, uh, from China on how fast they're developing the countries, the infrastructure, the transportation, and how modern everything is in China. And then uh, the next reason is because studying in China is actually uh, budget friendly, it's cost friendly. So it's, you know, like you get to study abroad, but with a relatively affordable cost. So studying in China is actually not that expensive compared to other countries. So that's actually one of the reasons why students are going to China. For instance, uh, studying and BBS in China is actually one of the cheapest uh, if you are comparing it with other destinations. And that's why a lot of the students, they're going to China to pursue MBBS, but not just MBBS, also for other uh, degrees as well. So in short, studying in China is an adventure of a lifetime because there are endless travel opportunities in China. China is very big 
it's very beautiful as well. You get to travel in every different part of China and actually will, you will see different things. If you go to the northern part of China, compared if you go to the southern part of China, the sceneries and the cultures and everything are going to be totally different. So it's really, really uh, interesting to learn from China. And then China, they have delicious uh, food everywhere. So if you love food, this is something that may be going to be interesting for you to taste different kind of food. Because as I mentioned, China is very, very big. So if you go to the north part compared to if you go to the southern part, if you go to Beijing compared to Shanghai, the food will be entirely different. So you can come and taste uh, everything when you're able to go to China. And then you will be you will be able to meet your friends from all over the world because nowadays a lot of the international students are also coming to China and they are not just from Asia, for example, but they're actually from different parts of the world. A lot of the students are from Africa, from America, from the European countries, from uh, Australia, New Zealand, from Asian countries, from Southeast Asia. They are all coming to China because they want to learn from uh, China, from the Chinese universities too. And in the end, you'll be able to develop a global mindset while learning your degree in a foreign country, while learning from their culture, their language, and everything. And then, you know, it will, it will boost your confidence. It will also boost your competitiveness in a global world. And then admission is now already open for Chinese universities. So the next intake, if you're applying for degree programs, is actually this fall or September 2022 intake. But if you're applying for a Chinese language program, uh, there will be two intakes, which was uh, in March 2022, or you can apply for next year, March, and also in September this year. So application is still open, actually, but time is very uh, limited right now. Clock is ticking. So if you are interested to apply to Chinese universities, then this is the moment where you should be applying. And then if you're applying for a fully funded Chinese government scholarship, the application deadline has passed actually, so you can try again next year around uh, the beginning of the year. So usually that's gonna be around January to March for a Chinese government scholarship application. But right now you can still apply for self-finance application and also for uh, opportunities from the university scholarships like the ZAS scholarship, for example, you can still get um, the scholarship if you apply now, but you have to be really quick because universities in China they are giving scholarship on a rolling basis as well. So if you don't do it very fast, then the scholarship position might be taken by someone else. And then uh, there are over 2000 programs in China and English. So if you don't know Chinese, that's actually no problem because there's also option to study everything in English while still learning Chinese, obviously. And then uh, this is some of the formula that I used to choose uh, that I used to share for students if they have some confusion in choosing the program. So the first thing that you need to do is to choose the major that you want to apply for. You need to know what is your future career plan. You need to know what subjects that you uh, that you like or something that you want to study further. And then you can decide what your budget is. So do you have enough budget to study in China? How much is your budget? Because in China, different cities might have different uh, living costs as well. For example, if you're studying in Beijing, uh, it's gonna be more expensive than a few other cities because Beijing is the most expensive cities in China. And then in terms of location, if you have any preference in terms of location, because uh, China is very, very big. So the living condition or the weather from here and there could be extremely different. So it's something that could be uh, taken into your consideration as well. And then uh, to search for programs, you can actually go to China Admissions uh, platform to get more information about what are the programs available at China that you can still apply for. And then uh, these are some of the popular and recommended programs in China, recommended universities in China, and some universities that we are working with. For example, for business administration program, and then computer science and medicine program. Usually these three programs are very, very popular among the bachelor students. So I think this is like uh, one of the most popular uh, majors among international students if they want to pursue their bachelor studies in China. And then MBA or IMBA program is also particularly getting more and more popular. I think it's due to the fact that China's business uh, side is very, very growing. 
And then everybody is looking towards China right now. So people want to learn from China and from their business and how they are, you know, growing everything this fast. And then if you are interested in something like a dual degree opportunities, China also has it. So you can study in China and like, for example, like half uh, in China and half in UK or half in China, half in French, this is actually possible or like half in China, half in Hong Kong. So this is possible. So uh, there are other uh, dual degree programs, opportunities available for international students too. Some of the programs that I shared today, this is just some examples that I'm sharing with you, but you can check everything uh, more completely on China admissions platform. And if you are interested to learn uh, Chinese language online, then this is something that uh, you can consider doing online classes with uh, Chinese universities. So you'll get to learn Chinese language with a native Chinese speaker. And then this is something that you might want to screenshot because this is like the general requirement for uh, applying to Chinese universities. So Chinese universities, they often have uh, age requirements. So the minimum age uh, would be 18 years old, because if you're under 18, you're considered minor, then you might need to have a guardian in China. And then, and then there is also maximum age and minimum education that you need to be uh, having. So you need to have like high school diploma to apply for bachelor's and et cetera. So you need to fulfill this requirement to apply to Chinese universities. And this is uh, the application process on how you can complete the application. So you can do everything on China admissions platform and then uh, just choose the programs that you want to apply for and then start the online application and then just complete the online application. And you can choose the service on China admissions, which ones that you want, and then upload the documents required. And this is uh, the list of uh, documents that are usually required. You can also screenshot this page because um, this is very important for Chinese universities. They will only process applications that have complete documents. So if your applications are not completed, then it's not gonna go further in the application process. So make sure that you allow yourself to have enough time to get all of these documents for your application. And right now, uh, universities also require students to get the non-criminal record and the foreigner physical examination form usually. And so you have to give yourself extra time to be able to finish the medical exam and like the, get the non-criminal record from the local police station too. So yeah, after that, you need to, uh, you can pay the application fee. So a lot of universities in China, they also impose application fee. Usually it's about a hundred dollars, like 80 to 150 dollars, depends on how much the university charges. And then uh, what you can do after you submitted your application to China admissions is that we will review and submit your application to the university. So you can wait for their decision. And if you're accepted, then uh, you can pay the deposit fee and then continue to the next step. And right now, the next step is studying online because the border is still closed. So once the border is open again, then you'll be able to study on campus. So this is uh, the final one. So this is the COVID-19 update for China. So for now, uh, as of today, international students are still not allowed to enter China. So because of the COVID-19 pandemic, obviously. So uh, officially only students from South Korea are able to get the student visa and come to China. Other countries, they might come on a rolling basis. It depends on the Chinese government decisions. I've heard some news uh, from some universities or some other countries that are that manage to send their students back in, but it's on a rolling basis and it depends on the invitation from the Chinese government too. So it's not uh, something official. And then for now, uh, what we can do is to wait on, uh, for the updates from the Chinese government. So for programs in September 2022, it's uh, likely going to be online, but again, it depends on the COVID-19 situation and the border opening for international students. But right now, because everything is still closed pretty much for international students, so everything is still uh, online. And then for students who are in China right now, uh, they are doing, uh, they're able to do on campus classes. Also, it depends on the local restriction at the moment, but yeah, generally they're able to do on campus classes. So when will the border be open for China? It's something that I cannot answer myself. So we have to wait for the further uh, information 
an announcement from the Chinese government. So let's hope for the best and let's hope that the border will be open soon. So yeah, that's uh, the end for studying in China updates and information. So if you guys want to know more about studying in China, go check uh, China admissions. And so you can check for the programs requirements and then do the online applications on China admissions. And if you have any questions, you can contact us uh, on the Q&A box or I will also leave our email address so you can leave us, us some message or questions there. Thank you guys. So I hope this uh, information is pretty clear right now for studying in China part. And then uh, right now, yeah, if you guys have any questions, you can just share it. You can just uh, write it on the Q&A box. And right now I will be inviting my colleague as a to share about the global COVID updates and work study update for all of you. Hi everyone, uh, good day to all the students. Thank you for coming to participate. My name is Savannah with Global Admissions and I'm going to be quickly sharing two resources with you that I think will be very helpful as you decide which country to study abroad. Both of these resources are on our website, Global Admissions, um, and I'll put the links in the chat box so you can all see them after I present. The first is the Global COVID Entry Policy Updates for International Students. So right now there is a lot of uncertainty about which country and region has open borders and which parts of the world are easiest to travel to for students. So we have actually found the entry information for many different regions around the world. And we have explained it clearly here and sorted by region. Um, you we also have sorted it by traffic light colors, red, green, and orange. So red uh, regions are obviously places where it's difficult or impossible for international students to enter. Green is there are no restrictions and it's very easy to enter if you can get the visa. Um, and orange is there are some restrictions. So it might take some time or you might have to meet additional requirements to be able to enter the region to study. And we also have provided the links for you so you can check the information yourself and get more details. The second resource we have for students who are planning to study is the work and internship guide. Now, of course, when you travel abroad to another region of the world and want to study, of course, you care about your academics, but your budget and your financial health is also a big concern. So in many regions and countries, they offer the opportunity for you to work and take internships while you are studying which can be a really important thing for students if you want to earn some extra money or get professional experience. So in this guide here on our global admissions website, we've also calculated the various regions of the world and whether they allow work on campus, off campus, and their policies on internships. And we've also included the legal minimum wage in US dollars. So you can convert that to your own currency or to the local currency of the country. And we have also included links to the relevant policies so you can read more details and research yourself. Uh, for most areas, it's very common that international students can have limited number of working hours per week. You can see in China, the limit is eight hours per week. In Japan, the limit is 28 per week. So there's quite more working hours available in Japan. Um, and you can also see the internship status. Yeah, and this is all on the Global Admissions website. So when you're planning which country to study abroad or where to travel for your academics, we recommend that you check these two guides first so you can get all of the border and working information that you need to make a good decision. Right. And I'll, yeah, I'll send these links to the chat so you can all have them. And now um, we will invite Rich from Global Admissions to share a little bit about the process of studying MBBS abroad.
Hi guys, thank you very much Savannah for that. So uh, MBBS is a program that a lot of students, a lot of you guys want to study and it's very popular for you to study in China. And I'm going to share some more about the options to study MBBS in different countries and regions around the world. So uh, firstly, I want to introduce that recently there's been a huge increase in demand for doctors all around the world, uh, partly because of the coronavirus situation. Uh, but generally, there's a huge need for doctors. So there's a, a massive need and a huge demand. And a lot of students are looking to become doctors. Uh, but unfortunately, there are limited options. And recently, there are even less options available. Uh, due to Russia and Ukraine, actually, it's very difficult to study in, in those places. And China currently is not uh, allowing students to go to China to study MBBS. So a lot of students are having challenges to study in these places. Uh, because if you're studying medicine, you really need to go to the to the place, to the country, so that you can do practical work experience. Um, so because there's not as many options and there's huge demand, there's a lot more competition for students who are trying to do to, to become doctors all around the world. So this is a huge problem. So we're trying to help you guys. And actually, we're going to introduce some other destinations that you can study at all around the world. And some of them are at the same or similar price to China. Some of them are even cheaper than China. And there are lots of amazing destinations that you can study around the world. So I'm going to introduce some of them today. So I'm going to introduce the uh, destinations that are cheaper or the same as China. And then I'm going to introduce some that are more expensive than China. And then I'm going to uh, introduce some that are uh, more expensive, like even more expensive. So let's start with China. So we have a lot of experience helping international students study MBBS in China. So there are 45 medical schools in China that do MBBS in English. And so there's lots of students from all over the world who come to China to study in, uh, in, uh, to come to China to study medicine and MBBS. Uh, this is especially for Indian and Pakistani students, but also from Africa and all over Asia and uh, many other countries around the world. So these are some of the popular universities and medical schools in China, such as Shantou University Medical College, uh, Dalian Medical University, Jiangsu, Medical, Jiangsu University and uh, Wuhan University. And you can see all of the 45 on the China Admissions website. And we also have a lot more content about how you can study MBBS in China. And the average price for studying MBBS in China is about 30,000 RMB. Uh, which is about five or six thousand US dollars per year, and that doesn't—that's only the tuition, so it doesn't include uh, living expenses as well. Uh, so the living expenses in China could be about eight thousand uh, US dollars per year, or between uh, five thousand to eight thousand US dollars per year. It depends. A lot of it depends on where you're studying. If you're studying in a big city, or if you're studying in a smaller city, the prices, the living expense is going to be a lot less. So this is another destination that a lot of students are interested in, and that is uh, Philippines. And the system in Philippines is not strictly called MBBS. It's similar to the American system where it's the BS and the MD. Uh, so Philippines is, actually, is recognized all around the world for having high quality recognized uh, medical programs. And so it's very good to study Philippines and uh, study medicine in the Philippines. Uh, the climate is very attractive to live in and the, the, there is a low cost of living compared to uh, China and also other countries. So the average uh, tuition fee at uh, AMA University, which is a medical school in the Philippines, is 4,200 US dollars per year. And you can also see uh, some of the other options in the Philippines on the Global Admissions website. So we have uh, at the moment we have about 50 of the lowest price MBBS programs on global admissions. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out. So Kyrgyzstan is also another low cost destination. And this is, so the program is six years and you can see some of the programs here like the International School of Medicine and the International University of Kyrgyzstan and Asian Medical Institute. So they can be from 3000 US dollars up to 7,600 US dollars per year. So Kazakhstan is another popular destination, and it's actually got a similar price to Philippines and Kyrgyzstan. And you can see some of the programs here, uh, such as the Karaganda State Medical University, and you can also see uh, Cerne State Medical University and some of the other ones there. And there's a little bit of variation in the price, uh, but you can definitely find some low, lower cost 
programs in these countries. Uh, one thing that you need to be aware of is the language, and I'll just discuss more about that later. Uh, actually, all of these programs so far are taught in English, uh, but when you're studying medicine in a country, you will need to learn the local languages as well so that you're able to do practical experience uh, when you're learning about it. Because as a doctor, the practical is very important and you definitely need to uh, communicate with patients when you're working and you're doing training. So if you're not willing to learn a new language, then it's important to choose a destination where the local language is English, such as Philippines. Uh, but if you're willing to learn a language, then you can look at another option. So Malaysia is an also a great destination to study in. So there are 32 medical schools and uh, you can study in English. And this is a little bit more expensive than the schools that I've introduced before, such as China, Philippines, Kazakhstan. And so the average tuition is from around 20,000 uh, or about 12,000 US dollars to about 30 US thousand US dollars. And the living expenses is also fairly affordable in Malaysia. So this is an attractive place to study. And uh, I'm also going to introduce some destinations in, in Europe, such as the studying MBBS in Poland. So in Poland, the living expenses are going to be cheaper than in other places in Europe. Uh, and the tuition for studying MBBS is between 9,000 to 15,000 per year. And so you can see some of the programs here, such as Warsaw, the, some of the schools here, such as Warsaw Medical Academy, uh, Medical University of Gdansk, and some of the other M medical schools in Poland. And Germany is also a very attractive place to study. Uh, you do need to study in German uh, if you're studying in Germany. Uh, and so if you don't have a good enough German language ability before you study, you will need to take a one year course before that program. And so that there's free tuition for the program and it's normally six years and three months is the program. Uh, but you do need to cover living expenses, which is going to be more expensive. Uh, one advantage is you can actually work part time when you're after the second year when you're in Germany. And so if you're not sure about if you want to learn uh, German and to study in Germany, uh, it's, you, it's also important to realize that if you're going to study in Kazakhstan or Kyrgyzstan or Poland, you're probably going to need to learn the local language as well. So it may actually be uh, not too much of a problem if you're studying medicine to learn German. And so some of the top programs that you can study, such as the universities are Heidelberg University, University of Munich, and you can also check out a lot more on Global Admissions Platform. So also I'm going to introduce a bit more about uh, studying in UK, which is one of the popular uh, destinations in the world to study, and I'm going to introduce more about UK a bit later. So the price of studying at UK is more expensive than a lot of the other destinations that I've introduced before. So it can be from about $23,000 per year to $60,000. And when you're living in the UK as well, you also need to cover extra additional expenses. And so the program is uh, between five or six years, normally five years. And then after that program, you'll do two year foundation. And so it's uh, also it's actually a similar length to other countries that I've mentioned before. Uh, one of the advantages of studying in the UK is that there's a very high compared to other countries, is very high doctor salary in the UK. So when you're graduating, you can start off at 40,000 pounds. And uh, after a few years, when you've been training, after training, you, the salary can range from, uh, say from $60,000 to $300,000 per year if you're becoming more specialized. So you can see that the tuition in the UK is more expensive, uh, but actually the doctor salary, if you continue working in the UK is a lot higher as well. Uh, so this is also something to think about. And I'll introduce more about UK in a bit as well. And so you can check out more on uh, global admissions about medical destinations and studying MBBS. And uh, we're aware that lots of students have challenges right now because they are studying in one uh, location and they're looking to, to study in another or they're interested in transferring. So we also have a university transfer service and you can check it out on global admissions. So we can help you a bit more then. And if you have any questions about studying in MBBS, do let me know in the comments. And I can also introduce some other destinations in the future. Uh, we um, So thank you for listening, guys. And I'm also going to introduce now Savannah, who is going to introduce more about studying in the US. So here we go, Savannah.
All right, hi everyone again. Um, I'm going to be introducing the process and what it's like to study university in the US. This is an extremely popular destination, one of the top destinations worldwide for international students. So of course, there is quite a lot of interest about how you can study abroad in the USA. First, uh, why would you want to study in the US? The US is well known for having an elite higher education. Out of the top 200 universities in the world, 45 of them are in the United States. That's almost 25% of the top ranked schools just from the United States. With over 1 million international students, it's a leader in international standards of education. The US also has thousands of unique educational programs because there are so many universities and the quality of education is so high, universities can offer really specific and unique programs from high tech research to liberal arts. Um, and finally, there's also global culture and diversity in the US. Uh, the US is one of the most diverse countries in the world. They have opportunities for you to study most languages in the world and also for you to meet people from your country and from hundreds of other regions around the world. It's truly a unique cultural experience. Here are some fast facts about university in the United States. The US has over 5,300 universities, which is a huge number. Compared to some other parts of the world, especially some Asian universities, the average tuition is much higher. The US is also unfortunately known for having one of the more expensive educations in the world. However, there are many benefits to getting a US degree. The United States is the top country for graduate employability. US university graduates have a high average salary starting out at 55,000 US dollars a year. And the United States is also the country with the highest investment in universities from the government. So the universities are very well funded, which of course means more learning and scholarship opportunities for you. And um, another important fact about the United States is that right now there are no border closures that prevent international students from entering the country. These are some of the top ranked universities in the United States. You probably recognize most or all of these names. We have Yale, Columbia, Princeton, and Stanford, for example. These are also the top universities in the world. And the standards of education set by these universities can influence education in the rest of the world. And also earning a degree from a recognized university can really help you in your career and further studies in your home country or even other countries as well. Some of the most popular majors in the United States, you can all take a look at this list, you can see there's a big diversity in the popular majors. This is because again, there is a huge number of universities in the US and most of them are very well funded. So you can put a lot of money into developing many of these programs and majors to be among the strongest in the world. So definitely whatever you want to study, no matter how small it may seem to you, you will be able to find the opportunity at a US university. Uh, many students have questions about the cost of studying and living in the US. This is a bit difficult to answer clearly because the US is one of the largest countries in the world, along with China and Russia. So of course, the cost of living and studying would be very different from city to city and from university to university. Um, on the left, you can see the yearly tuition cost of several universities from across the United States. You can see the costs are, they vary widely. And on the right, you can see the monthly cost of living in various popular student cities around the United States. So you can take a screenshot of this or do a bit of research online yourself to find uh, a university with a good yearly tuition. All right, let's look at the path to study abroad in the United States. How do you actually do it? Uh, the timeline to apply is very long. The United States universities open their applications from September to January. And of course, it's better to apply early 
So over the summer, most students will begin their research and prepare all their application documents, such as essays and recommendation letters. Then they'll apply in the fall. The latest uh, would be in the winter, in January. You can apply on global admissions to use our many services to help give you a better chance of admissions in your dream school. You'll receive the admissions notification in spring 2023 and then begin the visa application process to start studying in the fall of 2023. So for students who want to start studying right away in fall 2022, in the US, the intake has actually already been closed. The earliest you could start studying is in the fall of next year, 2023. Right, there are many different types of universities in the US. Uh, this can make it seem a bit overwhelming to choose a school because there are so many options, but you first need to understand the different types. The first is state or public schools. These are funded by the governments, by local governments, and they are a much larger size. It's not uncommon for the state schools to have several tens of thousands of students. You also have private schools, which are funded by private donors, which are called endowments. And they offer a smaller size and less emphasis on local students, which means that excellent international students can have great op scholarship opportunities at private schools. There are also community colleges. In the United States, college and university are the same thing. So this is just like a community university. At community colleges, you can earn a two or four year degree. They offer the cheapest tuition of all the different types of schools. Um, they may be good for students with lower grades or students who aren't really sure what they want to specialize in yet, because it's very common for students to study two years at a community college and then transfer into a different university. There are also many other types of universities, including religious, women's, art, culinary, and music schools, and HBCUs, which stands for Historically Black Colleges and Universities, and the majority of students at HBCUs are Black students or students of African descent. Right, the next step is, of course, to apply. You will need to research your university options and the documents they require. We can have all this information on global admissions for you to easily search and check your programs. You'll need to take the required tests, which may include an English exam or your country's national exam prepare the application and submit it well before the deadline. Applying early is always best. Um, some tips, make sure you check the university's website and social media. US universities update their websites regularly, so all the information will be accurate in English online. And also apply through global admissions. We have many different services for different types of students, including a free service and transfer service to help you out. Another major question that students have is about scholarships, because of course the tuition costs in the US can be very expensive and it can be quite prohibitive. Uh, universities do offer private financial aid and scholarships. Many of them offer hundreds of scholarships to their students and outside institutions offer scholarships such as religious organizations, businesses, local or national governments, or even private donors. You can get specific scholarships based on your grades, the country you're coming from, your gender, and what you want to study and your career goals in the future. Uh, the US is a great country for scholarships, but of course this means that they can be more competitive and you have to do quite a lot of research to pick the scholarships that are good for you out of the thousands of available scholarships. And Global Admissions has some resources and guides to help you as well. All right, if you are considering applying to the United States, uh, first, here are three common mistakes that students make. The first is you might think that you should only apply to the top 10 universities in the US, that they're the only good ones. Uh, this is actually not the case. Other universities may have the major resources and tuition prices that suits you better because of the high government funding in higher education in the United States. Most universities, even the top thousand universities in the US are going to be excellent options that are recognized worldwide. 
Another mistake is students think that only their grades matter for the application. Of course, CEOs universities will want you to have good grades, but they're more flexible than other countries in the sense that they also care about your personality. So if you have, maybe you have a year of bad grades because of the difficulties of studying online, US universities, they won't throw out your application right away. They might ask you to explain the year of bad grades or to show in an essay that you have the potential to improve and get high marks in the future. And they really value your passion, personality, your extracurriculars and your goals for the future. So these are elements you can highlight in your application instead of just focusing on only the grades and that's all. When you're applying to the US, you should focus on telling your story. They're really interested in getting to know you as a person, not just as a transcript or a CV. So you should tell the story of your past and future goals and focus on answering the question, how will your story continue to be written in the US? You can take a screenshot of this page. Um, it has several helpful websites that American students use to search for universities and scholarships. You can find schools on these websites. There are multiple college searching websites for the United States, but these are the best that have the most and the clearest information for you. And these are also some common websites to search for scholarships to study in the United States. And we also have an article on global admissions. You can visit our website to see the global scholarship guide for 2022 to 2023. It introduces even more websites to look for scholarships and explains all the different types of scholarships you can get and how they can help you. Another amazing resource you should use is global admissions. You can check out our website. We have a, you can book a free call to talk about your university goals and application with us. And we also have a university transfer service if you would like to transfer into a school in the US. And we offer free support for as a service. And we also offer other options for students who are applying to many universities or some top competitive universities. All right. Um, yeah, uh, I see some students were asking some questions, so I'll go ahead and answer those. Don't forget to check out all this information on global admissions. And next will be Rich. He will be introducing again about how to study in the United Kingdom. So thank you. Thank you, Savannah. So I'm going to introduce studying in UK, which is where I'm from. So I'm going to introduce why you should consider studying in UK, a bit more about the universities and programs, what the accommodation is like and how much does it cost? What are the expenses and how you can get scholarships in UK and how you can apply and the admission requirements and when you should apply. So why should you study in UK? There's lots of amazing reasons to study in the UK. Uh, one, some of the main ones are that it is a very international country, has one of the most international cultures in the world. And there are many people from all over the world in the UK. And it's very welcoming and diverse country. Um, and it's, yeah, it's lots of international students in the UK, about over 500,000 international students. And the quality of the education in the UK is very high, highly regarded around the world. And lots of people recognize UK universities as being some of the most prestigious universities in the world. There's also amazing work and career opportunities in UK and also amazing travel and living experiences in UK. And also it's very close to Europe and it's very easy to travel in UK and around from there. And there's beautiful places in UK as well. So UK has very rich and interesting history and culture. Uh, the English language obviously comes from UK and you can, it's a great place to study in the UK uh, to, if you want to improve your English, it's one of the best places to go. There's also a very rich history of sports in the UK and there's lots of uh, famous sports that come from UK originally. And UK is also a very inventive place and creative place. Uh, there's lots of amazing inventions that have come from the UK, such as the computer, the telephone, uh, the internet, uh, train the steam steam engine 
uh, the jet engine, many other amazing inventions. And there's also music is very well known all around the world. And arts is very important and very, uh, there's lots of amazing arts in UK as well. So it's, it's a very rich culture, a very rich place to live. Uh, another amazing advantage of living, of studying in UK is that after you have studied in UK, you can stay in the UK for two years uh, after you've graduated. Uh, even if you don't have work, you can still stay in the UK uh, looking for work. And then when you have found a job, then you can apply for a work visa in the UK. So it gives people time in the UK to look for, look for work. And these are some of the amazing universities in the UK. And I'm going to introduce some of those in a minute. And uh, you can apply to any university in the UK on Global Admissions Platform. So this is something that some people are sometimes confused about uh, because England is made up of, or UK is made up of different parts. So this picture clarifies it, the, uh, how the relationship is, and it's sometimes confusing, uh, but you can see that uh, in England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland are part of the United Kingdom. And uh, so this is, I'm introducing the United Kingdom today, and uh, I will introduce more about that. So when you're looking at choosing between a UK university, you can choose to study in a city or in a campus university. This is one of the big questions that you want to make is, would you like to live in a city or would you like to live in a campus? And so if you're living in a city like London, you're going to have a different, slightly different experience. So if you're living in a campus, which is going to be in more of a like a closed community uh, where it's maybe has more of a, a different kind of feel to it. And so this is one of the questions that you, you might want to think about. And in the UK, it's got the programs are some of the quickest in the world. So you can do a, a bachelor's degree in three years and a master's degree only takes one year in the UK. And if you don't meet the requirements for a bachelor's degree, you can study a foundation program for one year before the bachelor program starts. And there's also a, a well-known program in the UK called the Sandwich Program. So if you're doing a bachelor's program, uh, many of the universities will allow you to, to study for two years and then you take one year in the middle to do work or maybe to travel or to study in another country. And then you can come back to UK or come back to study for another year. So that's quite attractive because students would like to get some more experience. And everyone knows that in this time in 2022, it's important to get experience and work and to travel and to get different experiences. So this is a, what the accommodation is typically like in the UK. It's quite nice. Mostly people get a single place to themselves and there's different options. Most of the universities, especially in the campuses, will give you uh, the accommodation like this. Uh, which is in uh, what's called halls. Uh, you can also rent in uh, private accommodation outside of the university. And so how much does it cost in the UK? And the typical uh, tuition fee in the UK is from £10,000, but uh, more likely up to about £24,000 per year is the typical cost, uh, which is about US$30,000 per year is the typical cost for a bachelor's or a master's but it can vary up to a bit more for like up to 46,000 US dollars which is typically for medical programs it's going to be a bit more expensive than other programs such as humanities and the living cost in the UK is typically around 1,000 to 1,300 US dollars per month and this is a breakdown of what the living costs are going to be like I think uh, it's going to be a little bit more than that if you depends on where you live and what your living expenses are like, but if you live in London, it's going to be about 30% or 40% more than uh, if you live in another city, which is further away from London. And what about scholarships? There are lots of scholarships in UK. Uh, some of them are from universities and some of them from governments. So this is a list of the different scholarships. And normally the scholarships will go to the highest performing students. So if you have a high grades and um, then you can apply for these scholarships and uh, there's a lot of information online about how to apply for these. So this is one university that I'll introduce, which is University of Exeter, which is in the southwest of the United Kingdom. And it is one of the top ranks in the top 20 uh, in the UK and the top six, um, the ninth in the UK and in the top around 150 in the world. 
And this is what the typical tuition fees are like uh, for different programs. So it's about 21,000 for accounting and 38,000 for the BMBS, uh, which is like MBBS. And you can see where this is located. It's in a very beautiful part of England, uh, which is in the Southwest, very uh, beautiful part of the countryside. And there's lots of nice areas around there. And it's, very, it's a very nice campus university, which is also where I studied. And it's a uh, yeah, great place to study. And this is another university that is well known, which is University of Nottingham. And they have a campus in uh, UK, China and Malaysia, and also has a very beautiful university campus, uh, which is, uh, you can see in the picture, and is also ranked in the top 20 in the UK and in the top 150 in the world. And the tuition fees are similar are around 20,000 to 26,000 per year. One of the advantages of studying in the University of Nottingham is you can uh, also, uh, you can choose to study in China, Malaysia or UK. And uh, you can also take a, uh, some time to study in a different campus if you like. And uh, Nottingham is also very well known and very, very leading university in the UK. So what are the entry admissions requirements to study in the UK? So, I would introduce the intake is normally in September, October each year, and the bachelor's students will apply uh, one year before. So it's uh, you'll apply a lot earlier to UK, and then the deadline is in the fifteenth of fifteenth of January, and it's really important to apply as early as possible. But if you're applying for a ma master's degree or a postgraduate, then the entry, the admission deadline is going to be a bit more flexible but it's still very important to apply as early as possible, especially if it's a competitive program. And the UK has two semesters from September to Christmas and then from January to June. And one of the really important things about when you're applying to UK is you need to, uh, like similar to US, you need to show your personality and the personal statement is a very important part of the application process. So what is it? That you need to introduce like why did you choose this course how motivated are you uh, they want to get to know you as people and they want to understand um, because it's not it's important that you don't you're not just about grades but also you have a uh, like you're interested in other things and uh, UK university is a time to study but it's also a time to develop your interests and to learn about yourself and to try lots of different things and universities in the UK, when they review your application, they're also going to consider how do you fit into the university's culture and also what kind of things like how are you also going to contribute to the university life and how are you going to contribute to the community of the university. And so if you can show this is the same with every university around the world, if you can show that you're going to contribute to the university and give something to them, make, the, make it a better experience for the other students. It's going to make you more attractive to them and going to, going to be an advantage. Uh, and they also want to see that you're going to be successful in the future and uh, they want to attract more successful people to join their university. So if you would like to apply to UK University, you can apply online on Global Admissions and you can also request a free call where we can help you through it and we can also give you some support through the application. And we're pleased to be helping some students apply to UK and other countries at the moment, and hope we can help a lot more students to apply to UK and other countries. And thank you very much. And so I'm going to introduce uh, Nadia, who's going to uh, close off. And if you guys have any questions, do let us know on Global Admissions. We're creating a lot more content, so it can be helpful for you guys in choosing and going through the process of applying to university. Thanks, Rich and Savannah, for the presentation, for sharing about US, UK, and uh, MBBS studies overseas. So, so this is the final part of our event. So you guys have been traveling to China, to UK, and also to US. And now I will be uh, sharing more information about global admissions and why you should apply uh, to study overseas using global admissions. So, so the very first reason 
is uh, at Global Admissions, we offer free service and we don't charge any service fee to help you apply. It's free. So you only need to pay the application fee as required by the university. And moreover, we are also giving a full refund guarantee for students who sign up for our guaranteed application service under Global Admissions. And then secondly, Global, we created Global Admissions as a one platform for all, which means you can search and apply to multiple overseas universities in just one platform. So you can even apply to different countries in just one platform. For example, you want to apply to the MBBS in UK and also study uh, MBBS in the Philippines. You can do that all on in just one click at Global Admissions platform. And then the last part is because our team is responsive. So we have professional counselors who are available to help you from end to end, from choosing the programs all the way to the application process until you're enrolled at the university. And we also have experiences uh, that we help international students before. We have helped 3,000 students to study in China from 192 countries since 2015. And now we are expanding uh, ourselves and our service as well. So we are able to help you apply to go to other destinations outside of China. And then uh, other than that, this is our areas of coverage in terms of countries and regions so far that are available on global admissions platform. So you can go studies in the American continent. So for example, you can go to the US, you can go to West Indies, and then you can go to the European part. So maybe you want to go to Germany or Hungary, Italy, wherever, UK, you can also apply on uh, global admissions platform. And then if you want to go to Asian uh, countries, you can go to uh, Asian countries and study there as well. So not just China, but also to other countries like India, Japan, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, and so on. And we also uh, have, we are also able to help you apply to universities in Australia and New Zealand as well. So these are, I believe it's more than 20 countries. So we are able to help you apply to more than 20 countries. So thousands of programs in more than 20 countries are all available at Global Admissions. So we are there sharing the information uh, on Global Admissions to help you with the admissions process at these overseas universities. We know it can be uh, frustrating and challenging. Sometimes it's difficult to get updates or information about this or that programs or university. That's why we are developing the, pl the platform for you so we can help you move forward with your application process and also study at your dream university. So these are just some of the uh, examples of universities that are there on Global Admissions. I encourage you to check our website, Global Admissions. The link is down below. Uh, so you can check by yourself what are the universities covered uh, by Global Admissions. So you can go to the Philippines, Japan, and then uh, Singapore, Malaysia, European countries, US, West Indies, UK, wherever, just check it all on Global Admissions. And then this is just a glimpse of our platform, Global Admissions. This is where you can search for programs. You can find there are like 1,600 programs that were displayed on Global Admissions. And you can all apply here and we can help you apply there as well. And then if let's say you are having some challenges or maybe um, confusion as well in, in choosing the programs or choosing the countries or you have some specific uh, situation that you want to discuss with us with. So we encourage you to book a time uh, for a call with our team so we can help you further and we can give you some sort of solution and we can work on your application process together so you can be enrolled at your dream university. And then for more updates uh, for from Global Admissions, you can also check it on our blogs on articles.globaladmissions.com. And then I believe my colleague Saskia, she shared the COVID tracker and all the updates on the chat box as well. So you can check that as well. So you can know which, uh, which countries are open for international students. And then you can also know whether the countries are open for work and study or not. And then, so you can use all of this information as your consideration to choose where you want to go next for your future studies. And then last but not least, uh, this is just some information uh, to follow us on our social media. So we have, uh, 
YouTube channel for global admissions. It's called Global Admissions. So it's a new YouTube channel for global admissions. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will post more videos uh, later about programs, universities, about studying at specific countries. And also this event today, it will be, uh, it will be posted later on Global Admissions YouTube channel as well. And in case you haven't, you can also follow our other channel, the China Admissions channel, so you can get more updates about studying in China and what it's like living in China and all there if China is your dream destination. So this is the final, final part of the uh, today's event. So thank you so much for joining at uh, this far. So we hope what we are sharing today is useful for everybody who is interested to study overseas, who are considering to study in uh, US, UK, or China or other destinations. And if you still have any further questions about anything about the admissions at certain countries or about requirements, uh, process, documents, whatever, just drop us an email to apply at globaladmissions.com and you can visit our website uh, www.globaladmissions.com and you can search for programs there. So we are hoping that our platform is useful for your application process as well. So we are gathering a lot of information from different sources so you can get like a more comprehensive uh, information through global admissions and also use it for your application. And we can also help you with the application process too. And also one last part is uh, follow us on social media. So if you already follow China admissions, then it's time for you to right now follow global admissions too. So you can follow Global Admissions on Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, and also YouTube. And then if you have WeChat, you can follow China Admissions on WeChat. But yeah, if we have WeChat for Global Admissions, we'll let you know. But you can also follow uh, that WeChat we'll, where we'll be sharing updates, not just for China, but also for other destinations. So yeah, that's all, guys. Thank you so much for uh, staying uh, this uh, entire session. So if you guys have any further questions and if there are any unanswered uh, questions in today's session, we are really, really sorry because there's a limited time here. So feel free to drop us the email to apply at globaladmissions.com and we will assist you. And then if you'd like to request uh, time for consultation with our team, let us know as well so we can arrange that for you. I hope this information is uh, helpful for everybody. So I think that's the end uh, of our event. And if uh, there's no other information from my colleagues, Rich and Saskia, I think we can, sorry, Rich and Savannah, I think we can uh, end this event today. Is there anything else you guys want to say before we close the session? Okay, seems like all is good from Rich and Savannah. So. Yeah, I think that's the end of our uh, event today. Thank you everybody for staying and hope this information is useful. And we are at Global Admissions. We're ready to help you achieve your dream and study at your dream university.